In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. So, today is the day where we gather on the, on the day of the inauguration of our 46th president. And so it's something that's on all of our hearts and minds. We might have uh, differing feelings about it. Um, but one thing that we can all agree upon is hope. Hope for a good future. Um, hope for healing in so many different ways. Um, healing in our hearts. Healing for the divisions that we have experienced in the last, the last few years. And healing physically, too, as we all are looking for ways to get the vaccine um, and just looking for things to get better in our country. And so we have so much hope, so much hope. A hope does not eclipse wounds, the wounds that we are, like, what we are all experiencing right now and the many different losses that we have. And so we turn to God with this knowledge and this acknowledgement of our wounds, of the things that divide us, but with a great hope, a great hope for healing and a great hope for unity especially within our church. And we look to Jesus to provide that unity and to provide that healing. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and prince of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, Thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor. Before the day star like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The readings, at least to the Gospels this week, have all been pointing to how Jesus is very respectful of the law, the rules of the Sabbath, and yet is not bound by them, is not confined by them, is not limited by them. So he's always kind of breaking, I don't know if breaking the rules is the right expression, but he acknowledges them and says, you know what, there's something bigger going on here. Let's go beyond these rules. Let's go beyond these categories that have been imposed upon us that maybe we have misinterpreted and have defined us in a way that prevents life from flourishing, prevents healing from happening. Let's get beyond these categories. That might be the best way that, to summarize what Jesus is doing here. And in the first reading, we see um, the writer of the Hebrews, this letter to the Hebrews, which we first thought was Paul, but later on the church decided, you know, we don't exactly know who it is. He's basically saying, Jesus is this new priest, and before you were a priest because you inherited it from your family. But Jesus is something beyond this category. He is something uh, beyond this line, and he's even greater than that. So the invitation today is to maybe acknowledge these categories that we have for what is good, categories for where God is working, and then accept this invitation to see something beyond it, see something greater than it. There's this part in the gospel I really want us to pay attention to. Really important for us to pay attention to. The concern here is Jesus healing this man with a withered hand. That is a concern. And what is the concern of the Pharisees? It's the category. It's the category of when he can and can't do it. And Jesus does not want to accept this category. He does not want to accept this limitation. He wants to go beyond it. But they can't get past it, these Pharisees. They can't, they can't move past it. It's more important to them than the man that's standing in front of them. Way more important. And Jesus looks at them with anger and grievance by their hardened hearts. We often think of Jesus as always being peaceful and loving, never getting angry, but it says right here he's angry, he's grieved, he's saddened. So think of everything that's happening in our world today, everything that's happening. What would Jesus look at and say, I have a problem with this. I am grieved by this. I am angry with this. I am angry with this. And maybe it's something that goes beyond our categories. Maybe it's something that goes beyond what we are limited to. Sometimes I'm afraid, and I'm going to say something kind of maybe controversial. I'm, I'm afraid that our political parties in the U.S. define who we are as Catholics rather than us being Catholic defining these political parties. Because when I was looking online earlier today, the people that supported Trump are angry. The Catholics that I know who supported Trump we're saying horrible things about Biden. And the Catholics I know who are saying horrible things about Trump are now just jumping on ship with Biden. And there's something about that that's really disheartening to me. Because as Catholics, following Jesus, we're supposed to go beyond these categories. We're supposed to be challenged and challenged to go beyond these categories. Not to just fall in line with what's been given to us. We're supposed to be bigger than these. So I'm very hopeful for today 
in many ways, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Um, but at the same time, I know that everything's not going to just get better. We have to challenge and be challenged. As Jesus was challenged and was challenging in a way that Jesus was beyond these categories, that tried to go beyond them. And I think that that's the challenge for our church, never to just fall in line with the categories that are given to us, but always to try to go beyond them, beyond the categories, beyond the limitations that are given to us, especially as Catholics here in the U.S. That's my hope for all of us as Catholics, and I, and I hope that we can get beyond them a little bit for healing's sake and for the sake of the kingdom. Amen. There are so many things to pray for, uh, so many things to pray for. And we bring these prayers, all of these intentions, we raise them up to our God who sees the larger picture, who is not confined by what we see and what we don't see, by the categories that we impose upon what we see and what we don't see. So let's raise them up to this God who always puts us in front of any rule or any category or any label. And so let's pray for our world, uh, our world that is in the midst of this horrible pandemic, that we may place each other in front of any other concern. May we place the care of one another above everything. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church that we may follow the example of Jesus and put one another in front of all concerns. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the victims of COVID-19, for all those who have been, uh, who are experiencing symptoms, life-threatening symptoms, those who can't breathe, may the breath of God come into them and breathe through them for healing and for hope. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the healing of Scarlett Amarante and and for her family. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And one of our parishioners, parishioners uh, Sylvia, her mom, Barbara, is going, undergoing um, cancer treatment. So for her peace of mind, peace of body, and for further healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And one of our catechists here at, at Blessed Sacrament, her mother just passed away. For the mother of Myra, for the repose of her soul, Casta Luz Escobar. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So God, you are bigger than our hearts, and so show us what we want beyond just our limited view and limited perspective. And we pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Like Mr. Swire of mine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Castaluz Escobar, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those who have passed from COVID-19, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer one another a sign of peace. And while we're offering peace to one another, let's just say a small prayer in our hearts for peace in our nation as we make this big transition from one administration to the next. May there be justice in our peace and peace in our justice. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Love Christ keep us safe for eternal life. I invite you all to please close your eyes. Recognize in yourself that great desire to be in communion with Jesus, to receive his very body and blood, to receive the Eucharist. Spend a moment with him and maybe let yourself be challenged by him. What categories do you impose upon Jesus? And how can Jesus go beyond those categories in your own life? And we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already here, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.